right, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Immortal Index. Uh, now nah, let's get rid of the hysterics. Uh, so uh, I'm doing the chapter readings again, obviously. Um, so let me let me know in the comments what books you'd like me to do a first chapter reading. I might do like some one through fives just to give a little bit more context to some of these novels. But I'm also going to try to do, you know, ones I've never heard of before. So. I'm trying to find the ones I'm going to start reading because I haven't been, you know, keeping up to date aside from like the few that I were, I'm supporting the translators on. So let me know in the comments. Today I'm going to do um, a few, but the first one's going to be Second Life Ranker, which, you know, I'm sticking with uh, Wusha World for now, but, you know, I did notice a comment on YouTube asking if I'll do other sites, and I will. Just send me a link to the first chapter, and I will knock it out and kind of give you my thoughts on the first chapters. Um Looks like this one's translated by In Your Galaxy. Um, it's licensed by Dream Books. Uh, synopsis is Yan Wu's twin brother disappeared five years ago, only for his pocket watch to suddenly fall into Yan Wu's hands. Inside, Yan Wu found a hidden diary. By the time you hear this, I guess I will already be dead. Obelisk, the Tower of the Sun God, is a world where several universes and dimensions intersect. Yan Wu's brother had died after being betrayed while he climbed the tower, and after learning the truth, Yan Wu decided to climb the tower with the help of his brother's diary. From now on, I am Jia Chiang Wu. Okay, or Cha Chiang Wu. Okay, cool. So it kind of seems like he inherited this pocket watch, and uh, it's probably going to have like tips and tricks and stuff like that. Basically kind of like a little bit of a cheat book, so he'll probably be better off than other people in the, uh, in the story. Uh, the first comment up here is I've been reading since chapter one, where it was originally translated, this story is amazing. If you watch anime and you're familiar with Tower of God, you'll like the story because its world building is very similar. You take a test per rest through each floor. Okay, cool. So I'm not going to read any more for risk of spoilers. Let's go ahead and go to chapter one. That's uh, another two-part chapter, just like the last one we did. Um, an invitation from a pocket watch. All right. Uh... March 21st, 2018. Chapter 1. An Invitation from a Pocket Watch. Part 1. Yan Wu adjusted his clothes as he walked across the Incheon Airport terminal. His head was shaved and a Korean flag shone brightly on the arm of his neat military uniform, clearly indicating his status. After he took a moment to organize his backpack, he made a phone call. Click. Sergeant Cha, reporting in from Korea. Understood. Take it easy. And try to comfort your parents while you're there. Thank you. After expressing his gratitude... Yan Wu ended the call and put his phone down. He was feeling a lot warmer and more peaceful in Korea after a three-year stay in Africa, even though his mind was full of distress. With a cigarette in his mouth, he took something out of his pocket. It was a letter he had received during his mission, and it was marked with the word obituary. His younger brother had disappeared five years ago, and the letter had notified him of his brother's death. The funeral was finished, and his brother's ashes had been scattered in the sea in front of Taejong Day. His brother's favorite place, Yan Wu hadn't heard any news about him in the last five years, and now his brother had shown up inside a cold urn. He was holding this when I found him. The person who had discovered his brother's body took out a small box. Yan Wu opened it with care. It contained two items, a faded photograph and a pocket watch. In the photograph, his brother stood in front of a shabby house wearing some kind of medieval armor. Next to him were people with unusual appearances. Had he been filming a movie somewhere? He wondered. Yan Wu had roamed around all sorts of places, but he'd never seen anything like this. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yan Wu had been unconsciously touching his brother's image in the photograph, and the man's voice brought him back to his senses. A question popped into his mind, but it didn't seem like an appropriate place to ask, so Yan Wu could only thank the man and return home. In his room, he quietly looked at his brother's smiling face in the photograph. They were twins with identical features, and yet they were so different from each other. His brother had been a model student, but he had been a weak introverted, weak and introverted. He enjoyed reading books and watching movies. Yan Wu, on the other hand, was very extroverted. He was also very fit, majoring in athletics before entering the military academy. People were often surprised by how different they were, but the brothers had always stuck together. The little brother would hold on to his scatterboard, his scatterbrain brother, and teach him how to study. As his little brother lay in bed, the older brother would tell him several times a day about the fun and exciting things outside. They were both devoted to each other. But then, with only one day before the CSAT, his younger brother had disappeared. 
So many things changed from that day onwards. His mother, who was already suffering from a chronic illness, passed away. After unsuccessfully searching for his brother for over two years, Yanwu gave up and enlisted in the military as a non-commissioned officer, volunteering to be dispatched to Africa. From that moment on, he became less of an extrovert and grew more cynical. His connection to Korea was cut off, and he believed that he would never return. But five years later, the notification of his brother's death reached him. At first, he had been mad at his brother for disappearing without a word, only to end up dead. The first thing that had come to his mind was how self-centered his brother had been. But as the funeral began, he started to feel empty, as if his soul was being torn apart. By the time he was scattering his brother's ashes in Taedong Day, his heart was bursting at the seams. He wanted to ask what happened to his brother, but what he had been doing, and why he had returned in this manner. But his brother in the photograph did not say a word, just as he hadn't said anything in the last five years. <sighs> Yanwu put the photograph down and examined the pocket watch. It was worn out and threadbare, as if it were more than a hundred years old. It no longer ran, and only the Roman numeral for 12, XII, and the hour hand remained. He took it to a jeweler to have it repaired, but the only answer he got was that it was too rusty to fix. I gave this to my brother as a present. When they turned 19, the year they had entered junior high school, the brothers had given each other a present on their birthday. The younger brother gave him a book to study, and Yanwu gave his brother a pocket watch to wish him luck on his CSAT. This was the pocket watch. Yanwu grabbed the pocket watch. It slipped and fit perfectly in his palm. It was just the right size. I knew it. He remembered how he wandered around all the shops, looking for a pocket watch that would perfectly fit in one hand. Yanwu turned the watch over. There was a name engraved in cursive in one corner on the back. J.W. Tsa. Whoa, I really needed a watch. Thanks, bro. This is way cooler than a digital watch. Haha, <laughs> what do you think? Your big brother's got good taste. But what's engraved here? J.W. are the initials of my first name, but what's Tsa? Mm, that's Cha, our family name. How is this Cha? Look, it's spelled C-A-H. What? Damn it, give it to me. Why? I'm going to bring it back to the shop to have it fixed. It's okay, don't bother, I'll take it. From now on, I'll just write C-A-H whenever I write my name. The younger brother confidently put the watch into his pocket. Later, he proudly wrote C-A-H as his surname on his passport application. At that time, Yun Woo had both felt sorry and grateful at the same time. But now he chuckled as he remembered. As he ran his hand over the pocket watch, he pressed on a knob by accident. Click. Huh? Isn't it already broken, he thought? The knob slid into the watch, and suddenly the stopped hour hand began to move. To my older brother, who will... One sec, guys. Oh, excuse me. To my older brother, who will listen to this sometime in the future, he heard a familiar voice inside his head. Yunwu instinctively sprang to his feet. It was a voice he hadn't heard in five years, a voice he thought he would never hear again. His brother's voice. Thump, thump. His heart started to pound crazily. By the time you hear this, I guess I will already be dead. He was not hallucinating. Yanwu checked to see if there was a speaker inside the pocket watch, but found nothing. The voice really was inside his head. How is this possible? He thought. I am sorry. You had all had a hard time because of me, didn't you? I just wanted to find a medicine for Mom. I thought I could return home soon, but time went by too quickly. What? It was, this, it was at this moment that his eyes grew strained. Whew. Suddenly, a flood of his brother's memories passed in front of his eyes like a panorama. It was a diary. October 9th, 2013. A strange text message appeared on my phone. It said it would grant anything I wish. No other words, just buttons so I could choose whether to join or not. Normally, I would have ignored the message, but I couldn't help thinking about Mom in the hospital looking more and more haggard every day. So I pressed the yes button, just in case my mom could be cured. Nothing changed. I felt very hollow. It turned out to only be a prank, but from that day on... I began to have strange dreams of climbing what seemed to be an infinitely tall tower with 99 floors. October 12th, 2013. It was definitely not a dream. Everything was clear. It was real. A world with creatures like elves and dwarves, but also monsters like orcs, trolls, and dragons. A world where several universes and dimensions intersect in one place. The tower sits in the center, waiting for people from all over the world to climb it. As soon as a person breaks through the 99th floor, he or she will become a god. At least, that's what I heard someone say. People pointed at the tower and called it the Tower of the Sun God, Obelisk. But that doesn't mean a thing to me. The only thing that matters is that somewhere in that tower is an elixir that can cure all diseases, the panacea. With that in my hand, I can save Mom from her illness. October 28, 2013. I was able to team up with some like-minded friends to start climbing the tower. Still, it wasn't easy at all. 
We had to kill all sorts of monsters and we faced mortal dangers. This place may look like a game, but it's not. It's real. If you die, everything is over. But my teammates and I are talented. Back in the real world, my feeble body always causes worries for my family. But in this world, I was able to see the light through the runes. We were told that we were the first team to break through the first ten floors in four days. Since then, I began to seriously consider. I won't be able to live in the real world and in the tower at the same time. November 9th, 2013. I've made up my mind. I tried explaining this place to my brother, but whenever I face him, the words won't come out of my mouth. Do I say, there's a world called Tower and I'm trying to find some medicine there? Even though he looks gruff, my brother has a warm heart. What would he say? I bet he would volunteer to take my place instead. That can't happen. In the end, I decided to leave home. They'll be looking for me, but I'll be gone for half a year. I'm sure I can retrieve the elixir by that time. And just like that, I disconnected myself from the real world. December 1st, 2013. My teammates and I named our team Arthia. Arthia is the best in every single way, in teamwork and in individual skills. We're at the top of our game. We rapidly broke through several floors, and there's no one in the tower who doesn't know our name. I might be able to get a hold of the panacea much faster than I thought. September 7th, 2014. Our climbing speed has slowed. I thought I would only need half a year, but now I might be here for one more year. November, November 11th, 2014. We had a fight with some high-ranking clans who see us as an eyesore. We now have more obstacles to overcome. February 31st, 2015. Negotiations have broken down. War has begun. July 2nd, 2015. The alliance of clans we're fighting has just collapsed. Arthia, which started with only 12 people, is now one of the 10 largest clans. All of our teammates are high-rankers, rank and I, Arthia's leader, have risen to ninth place. It's said that I'm the person who's entered the top ten in the shortest amount of time. However, I just can't stand here and celebrate. Because of the war, we haven't had time to find the elixir. We need to pick up our speed and climb the tower. March 4th, 2016. I've fallen in love. September 19th, 2016. Another war has begun. There's fresh enmity before, between Arthia, which wants to climb higher, and other high-ranking clans who want to maintain the status quo. I've been trying my best to persuade them, but it isn't easy. To make matters worse, some of our teammates agree with them, but they can't voice their opinions because they're worried. Even if I know this, I pushed our clan to keep climbing up the tower so we couldn't avoid conflict. But even now, time keeps flowing. I feel like I'm going crazy. January 2nd, 2017. Arthi is now in fifth place. However, the war hasn't ended, and everyone is too tired. June 6, 2017. We found a traitor in our clan. We managed to kill him before he could rise up against him, but it was enough to cause a rift between the team. Everyone has started to distrust each other. Members are leaving the clan one by one. July 1st, 2017. My body feels heavier. I've been poisoned. October 30th, 2017. Half of the clan is gone. We keep on losing battles, and we don't dare to climb to higher floors. I tried asking around about the elixir, but I couldn't find any information about it. And my body is slowly breaking down. November 1st, 2017. The person I loved left me with a dagger to the heart. I barely blocked it with my skill, but I could not continue suppressing the poison. My body is starting to rot. December 30th, 2017. I miss my brother. February 1st, 2018. I am the only one left in Arthia. How did things go so wrong? Is it because I trusted people too much? Or is it because I was too absorbed in my own needs and neglected to look after my teammates? Or is it because I left my family? February 28th, 2018. On the last day of February, I finally got my hands on the elixir. Now I need to find a way to send it home, but there's no way. I can't leave the tower even if I wanted to. I'm surrounded by other people. Maybe they think I'll treat my poison with it if I leave. Everyone's coming to kill me. There's no one left by my side. Now I know. There's only one person I can trust, but I cannot show them my weakness. This is the end of my diary. I believe that if I leave this behind, my brother will find a way to come to this place. If it's you, Hyung, you can retrieve the elixir and bring it safely to our mom. <laughs> All right, that's the end of chapter one, part one. Pretty interesting. Um, seems pretty cool. Definitely wasn't what I thought it was before I read it. Um, I definitely thought, I guess he got memories, though. He did get memories. He got a bunch of memories inserted in his head. So that's going to be like the, that's like the gimmick, that he's probably going to have access to all these memories that kind of tell him what the heck's going on, and he'll know how to climb the tower really quickly, and then he'll have to, you know old hostilities between his brother and the other clans he'll have to kind of go into and, and fight off but no it's pretty interesting i might actually read a little bit more of this i'm gonna i'm gonna do some more reading on this but uh cool guys comment below if you want a chapter reading of something and hit me up 
Uh, obviously, I'm on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux Photo or Stephen Lemieux, but you can find me uh, on Twitter at The Immortal Index. Um, that's the, the show Twitter feed. All right, and I will see you guys next time.